saves and keeps me, and he's the one I've waited for. Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day I tell you, all these songs are the ones that go through my head all day, every day, every day. Better than the stuff they write now, I tell you that. Hey, and uh, we can put on one of the two power, uh, one of the two slides. It doesn't matter. Isn't he or, or, uh, or he has shown, oh, no, no, wait, what did I put? Softly and tenderly. Always. Aloha. Good morning to each one of you. Welcome to the Hilo Seventh Adventist Church this morning. We are so glad 
that you are able to be here with us today, whether it is in person or virtually. Uh, we're glad that you have joined us today. I am uh, Alan Lips. I'm going to make a couple of announcements uh, before we get started. So let's see if I can do this without messing it up. There we go. So on our uh, announcement sheet today, things we need to remind you about. Church Vespers is back. I understand last week was the first one. And we're going to have that again tonight at 5 p.m. here at the church, uh, closing the Sabbath here at the church, 5 p.m. Young adults, you're going hiking today, Halea Mau Mau, Volcano National Park. Uh, this will be at 2.45 this afternoon. You can go get yourself all worked up and then come back down for Vespers. Uh, contact Celica or May if you have any more questions about that. But otherwise, it looks like you're meeting at the Visitor Center at Volcano National Park. Church business meeting, January the 8th. That will be right after Vespers, so make sure that we're here for that. Um, there is a floral calendar. Uh, it is available for this coming year and for the month of December. That is in the foyer, so if you're uh, in, the, uh, in the flower business and would like to uh, share with the church, that's for you. Ladies, you're going to give the guys an excuse to get together by meeting at Lamb's Restaurant tomorrow evening at 5 p.m., so that's, uh, that's uh, an excuse for the guys to get together, I think. No, or, no. Um, to my right here, uh, to your left, is the giving tree. This is what we do traditionally to help families that may need a little extra help this season. Um, you can make a donation for it and receive an angel to put on the tree. So we do thank you for contributions to that project. At the end of the service today, in honor of uh, Mrs. K, we are going to be, pa Mauna Loa School is going to be passing out Little boxes of love, and uh, uh, Abby and Kalena, I believe, will be posted at each door, and each family is going to get to receive a very special gift. It's empty. There's nothing in here except a lot of love, a lot of love. So anytime you're feeling like you're a little blue or I just don't know what to do, you can get your box out. Remember Mrs. K and Mauna Loa School and all the love that comes pouring out of our number one evangelistic tool, Mauna Loa School and preschool. So without uh, anything further, I think I've covered everything. Let us I drop my glasses. Let us continue with our singing. I know, I know he would have done the same for me. Even if it was your team. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I didn't have to reach far down. I didn't have to bend for him. So. Spirit 
silver you can satisfy you alone are the real joy giver for the Lord is in his holy temple. bow our heads together for a word of prayer and for our friends and family watching online across the island and maybe even around the world we want to invite you where you are to assume a posture of prayer father god this is your time these are your people and lord this is your day we ask dear lord that in a special way we ask for the outpouring of the holy spirit upon us we ask, Father God, that our worship service would be an acceptable offering of praise unto you. We give you free reign and right of way in our hearts and our minds to pour into us the things of God. We ask, Father God, that you would filter out of us the selfishness that is in our hearts and help our minds be directed to the spotless Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And the distractions of everyday living the rat race, week after week, may those things grow strangely dim, dear God, in the light of your glory and grace. We ask that in a special way, Lord, that you would make yourself known to us as we revisit through partaking of bread and wine that sacrifice that took care of sin. And I pray, Father God, as we reflect on that, we remember that it was one who loves us who paid it all. We welcome you. We approach you and we worship you this morning in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Well, please remain standing. As we sing, it came upon the midnight clear. Thank you. 
be seated. So John Teehee could not make it this morning, so I'm going to step in for him, fill in. Just let you know that today's offering is for Adventist Community Services. Uh, a couple of days ago, and we had a, a, a river of rain fall on uh, our fair state, uh, there was quite a bit of damage across the state, and it was uh, Adventist Community Services in Maui and Honolulu that stepped up and helped a lot of the neighboring folks uh, who sustained some damage to their homes and, and, uh, and such. So Adventist Community Services is uh, operating all around the world, uh, but we also have some right here in our own community. So this morning's offering, a uh, loose offering, if it's not designated for anything, will go for Adventist Community Services. But otherwise, let's remain faithful with our tithes and offerings to our local church. And if you would with me, please bow your heads. Father in heaven, as we give of ourselves, I pray that we will give from the heart, that we will give with a happy heart, so that the offering that is uh, given to you can be multiplied, can be blessed, and can be used to help others not only know about you, but to see people serving you. In Jesus' name, amen. There will be uh, no children's story, so Araceli is now going to do the uh, uh, congregational prayer. Aloha, my church family, please join me here and virtually online as any way you can, on your knees or sitting, whatever way, as long as our hearts are inclined before our Lord. Father God, we are so thankful, so happy, so joyful, Lord, to be here prostrated before your throne of grace, confessing all our flaws, confessing our need for you, confessing your blessings upon us, confessing that you are God of all, creator of the universe, creator of each one of us, made in your image. Holy Father, precious Father, full of grace and forgiveness and love and aloha for us. We thank you, Lord, for the many blessings, for the ability, Lord, to come and talk freely to you. We can talk privately in our home, in our car, as we walk, as we sit. We can talk to you anytime, Lord, but we thank you for this special opportunity during these holy hours to come before your grace before your throne, Father. Thank you so much for everything you do for us, Father, for everything you have done and for everything you will do. Father, this morning, some of us come with joy, gladness, adoration, Father. Some of us come with a heavy heart, full of sorrow and brokenness, but nothing you cannot fix. Some of us, Lord, we come with perplexity, not knowing what to do about this or the other, remembering, Lord, that you have everything worked out because you know the beginning and you know the end. You are the Alpha and the Omega, Father, and you deserve our worship and you deserve our faith, Father. We trust you in all things. Thank you, Lord for your son, Jesus Christ, who made all these things possible, Father. Thank you so much for everyone who is here, either virtually or in person, Father, for each family who is represented, 
They are all lifted up to you in prayer. Our health, prayer requests, our spiritual walk, prayer requests for ourselves and for others. We know, Lord, that you know all of it and every detail you will work out for us. And we praise you, Father. And we pray all this in the name of Jesus, the holiest name of all. And through the power of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, we ask that you also anoint our understanding of your word that will be spoken today. Anoint our speaker, anoint his lips, his mind. And Lord, as we leave this holy worship place, may we leave changed. May we leave willing to share and spill your love and everything you do for us as we may be vessels for you. In the name of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit, I pray. Amen. I want to praise the Lord for young people that are willing, but also adaptable. Pastor decided to uh, use pastor's privilege and prerogative, I guess, this morning and change the uh, scripture on our young Miss Abby John this morning. So she's going to be reading from 1 Corinthians 11, verses 23 to 26, instead of what is listed in your bulletin. Again, that's 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 26. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given things, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the, in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup to proclaim the, de the Lord's death till he comes.
is what a sovereign hand will be my guide. And with his nail and fear surrounds me, it never fails, and you won't start now. So I will call upon your name and keep my eyes above. My soul rests in your embrace, for I am yours, and you are mine. Keep my eyes above the waves. My soul will rest in your embrace. For I am yours, and you are mine. Happy Sabbath. Oh boy, I, I was truly blessed by uh, that sermon and song in our special music. When oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace, for I am yours and you are mine. Did you remember that Christ is yours and you are his when the challenges of life rose this week, this quarter, this year? I pray we always remember that we're not alone. Christ, our mediator, is our advocate. He stands for us. We are not alone. We have the presence of God to guide us in this life. And so I just pray that you were blessed this morning so far. And I know today is a very special Sabbath as we are going to enter into our communion service this Sabbath. Um, and so we want to uh, encourage you even now to prepare your hearts and your minds for the special service where we reflect on the sacrifice of Christ Jesus and what he did for us all. I'm going to cover this morning's uh, short message. We're just going to have a homily this morning uh, in prayer as we proceed. Let us pray. Father God, this morning I just, I ask, I ask for power from the Holy Spirit. I ask, Father God, for wisdom and discernment. I ask, Father God, for guidance. And I, I pray, Father God, that as your words fall upon us, that they would land in directly and specifically the places that they need to land. Lord, I pray that we would never forget what was done to make a ransom for us. And I pray that our hearts would be eternally grateful, not just in declaring it as true, but living it. May we be living sacrifices, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, I want to put a, another plug in this morning. I don't know if we mentioned it in this morning's announcements, but we are having a special worship service two Sabbaths from today on December 25th. Um, that will be a joint worship service with your sister church, Tapuna Seventh-day Adventist Church. They'll be joining us. Um, and we are going to have a special service in which it's going to be um, music selections and scripture selections 
uh, right now from both churches uh, in lieu of a sermon message. So if you don't have plans for the holiday, if you are not, uh, if you are available that Sabbath, come and worship with us on December 25th, special worship service, which we're calling Good News and Great Joy. Amen. Amen. I want to spring on the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 2. And in the book of Genesis and in chapter 2, we find an occurrence in human history that is a bit on the sad side. In Genesis chapter 2, the Bible records the very first incidents of loneliness in the human story. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, God observes as he looks upon the world that he has created and called good, it is not good for man to be alone. God's conclusion in Genesis 2.18 is not only is it not good for man to be alone, but here's what I'm going to do about it. I'm going to make a helper for him. So in begins the beautiful story of man and woman. God makes a helper. Now, interestingly enough, friends, the Bible says, I will send a helper comparable to him. In other words, God wants to remedy this problem of loneliness, this lack of companion where the man does not have one like him by sending a helper who is like him. Here's how the Bible accounts it in Genesis 2, 19 and 20. It says, out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. Sparrow, mongoose, owl. So Adam gave names to all cattle, to the birds of the air, to every beast of the field. But the Bible says, for Adam, there was not found a helper comparable to him. As the procession of couples came before Adam, the lion took a look at his lioness and said, roar. The cow took a look at her bull and said, moo. The penguin took a look at his lady penguin and said, penguin, or whatever it is they say. But there was no Mrs. Adam. No one comparable to him. No one like him. No one like him who could help. So what God does in his miraculous mercy and amazing love is he performs the first surgery in human history. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 2 that a deep sleep falls upon Adam and God opens up Adam and removes a rib. Here's the account from scripture in Genesis 2, 21 and 24. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and he brought her to the man. Now I can imagine at this point, God having, having put Adam under, opened Adam up, removed a rib and from that rib formed a woman and is now presenting that woman to Adam. I can imagine at this point that all the angels of heaven burst out singing, isn't she love? Because there she is, Mrs. Adam. Now, Adam's response is, is something I think is even more beautiful than singing. He bursts out into poetry. Those words are actually Hebrew poetry that you see written in Genesis chapter 2, verse 22. And this is what the poem uh, is that he shares. He says, this is now bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. He marvels. He adores her. He is pleased. He is fulfilled. God has just satisfied a longing that Adam originally wasn't even aware of. May we never forget that the things we don't even know we want and need, God knows we want and need. And he's a good God. So Adam marvels over the fact that where there once was no one, now there's someone and someone like him 
Now there's someone like him where there once was a void. Now there's a helper. There's a companion. There's a partner. And he says in his poem, she is Coco of my Coco and Eo of my Eo. Those are Hawaiian words. She is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. We are one. Adam's happy. He's overjoyed. And he should be. The writer of Genesis picks up the narrative after Adam exclaims his story with this conclusion connected to the miraculous formation of the woman and the intimate connection to the man she has by being created from his rib. The Bible says in verse 24, therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and they shall become one flesh. Because a helper came, out of Adam's flesh, marital oneness becomes possible. And all throughout time, the human family has attempted generation after generation to be true to that oneness. We are one. If we mistreat our wife, we mistreat our own flesh, right? We are one. Unfortunately, the first couple, as the story unfolds, reveals to us that a a new predicament sprung upon the human family, and this one was more devastating than loneliness and the lack of a companion. This was the predicament of sin that was ushered in by disobedience when the man and the woman chose to follow their own logic under the deceit of the enemy and disobey God, bringing in sin and a curse and generational cycles of disease, death, and destruction and spiritual darkness. Worst of all, it brought in a separation between God and man. He had just given them this beautiful illustration of oneness, and now there was separation. So deep, dark, and devastating was the separation, Hilo Church, that they could not remain in his presence, let alone in his garden. So they were kicked out, and a flaming sword guarded that beautiful botanical place. They could not come back to the place where the beautiful vegetation was, to the place where the crystal river flowed, to the place where the tree of life was. They were expelled. They were kicked out because they chose to rely on themselves instead of relying on God. To this day, that is our most pressing problem, choosing self over God. So now sin separated the first couple from God, and once again, the human family needed a helper. Once again, God would provide that helper. But unlike Eve, the helper that was to come to deal with the problem of sin had to be more than just a wife who could meet the needs of a companion and a helper. It had to be someone who could somehow remedy the curse of sin. Once again, we needed a helper. Once again, that helper would be like us. Once again, that helper would be of our flesh, human flesh, eel and coco, flesh and blood. The Bible says in John 1, verse 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And it says in verse 14 of that same chapter of John, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Now we know the word was not created at the point of becoming flesh because in the beginning was the word. The word is preeminent and preexistent. The word was not created, but the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Now God comes in a form that we all can relate to. Tangible and touchable, visible and right there. Speaking Hebrew words, eating Hebrew food, walking dusty streets, riding on donkeys. The word became flesh. He was down here. He was with y'all. He was with us. He was with them. And regarding this sin problem, which was a bigger problem than something a mere human companion could satisfy, the Bible says in John 1, 29, regarding John the Baptist, the next day he saw Jesus coming toward him and he said, behold, thank you, sister, 
who takes away the sins of the world. A helper has come in the flesh, and he offers his flesh as a sacrifice to take away the sins of the world. Your sins, Hilo Church, my sins, their sins from days gone by, their sins in days to come. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Jesus came and he was wrapped in flesh and Christ came to deal with our sin problem. He came to liberate us. He came to build a bridge across the separation. He came to give us access to the Father so that it can be just like it was in those botanical days in the garden. One and together. Once and for all, he offered his flesh and blood to make atonement for sin. The helper who is like us, offering his flesh and blood as a ransom for your own. He sat with his friends at the table one night, the night before he was betrayed. Actually, the night that he was betrayed, he gathered his friends around because he wanted us to understand this from generation to generation to generation. This exchange and this ransom. The Apostle Paul writes it. And 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and thank you again, Abby, for taking us there. 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 26. And we're going to conclude on this point. Today's message is a homily. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty-three 23 through 26, the Bible says, The Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, my eel, my flesh, broken for you. The lamb that takes away the sins of the world could only take away the sins of the world if it was slaughtered. Someone has to decrease. Someone has to die. Christ said, I will go through this for you. So I want you to take bread to remember that my body was broken for you so we can be together again. And when he had given, um, after the same manner, also he took the cup which he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So we needed flesh disturbed. We needed flesh cut. We needed flesh brutalized so that blood could be spilled. But the problem was not any flesh would do. It had to be a spotless lamb. It had to be a righteous one who's pure through and through. Only God could help us. And the word became flesh for us. Paul writes, Again, re recounting that night when Christ was behaved, uh, betrayed for as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. See, at the center of the gospel is a message about Christ dying on the cross. We show the Lord's death until he comes. That's a last day message, until he comes. That means leading up until the second coming, we ought to always remember the Lord's death. At the center of our message ought to be a proclamation that Christ died for sinners. My eel and my cocoa, so that we can be one. The Sabbath Hilo Church, we're going to transition into what we call the ordinance of the Lord's Supper in which we remember through taking of bread and taking of wine that Christ's body was broken and his blood was spilled for our sins. And that this is our message of hope. This is our central point, that he did this for us, and this is why we call it good news, the gospel. I pray as we take these emblems, we will reflect, reflect not just on a murder, not just on a product of Roman crucifixion, on a Jewish man who was pinned to a crossbeam, but the meaning behind that execution, the passion and the love. We didn't have a chance unless he went through that. And the Bible calls him the lamb slain for the foundation of the world. So he didn't stop and observe X amount of thousands of years of human history, weigh the balance and decide, okay, I think I'll go in and help them. He decided to make a way before there was even a problem. He said, I want 
them with me forever. Emmanuel, God with us. We want to invite you as we transition into our ordinance of the Lord's Supper to participate. In the Seventh-day Adventist Church, we practice open communion, and so that means if you profess Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we invite you to partake of these emblems together with us as a congregation. We're going to transition into our ordinance of the Lord's Supper, and we just pray that what Christ did on the cross would continue to guide your thoughts and behaviors for the rest of this year and for the rest of your story so that you can declare the Lord's death until he comes. Won't you pray with me, church? Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for the gift of Jesus and the sacrifice on Calvary. Wash us anew. Help us to come to your word daily. Help us to partake of your word daily as if daily bread. And I pray, Father God, as we go forth and we take this bread and we receive this wine, we remember the body that was broken and the blood that was spilled, not just for informational box checking, but for personal revival. What I'm saying, Lord, is I just pray that you would give us a response that leads to evangelistic living and constantly pruning our Christian witness under the chisel of the teacher, the Holy Spirit. Lead us, refine us, make us new, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to encourage you to just remain seated where you are. And uh, we're going to transition, our serving party is going to transition to our ordinance of the Lord's Supper.
Friends, I want to invite you at this time to bow your heads with me as we open the Lord's communion table with prayer. Father God, guide our thinking and guide our hearts. Keep this fresh before us daily, not just once a quarter. What you did and what it means. And then overwhelmed by that good news, propel us into the dark corners of the world to declare Christ came, Christ died, and Christ is risen. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. In the book of John, chapter 6, or Jesus, uh, Jesus um, instructed, and it's where we are reminded, where he says in John 6, verse 35, Jesus declared, I am the bread of life, and whoever comes to me will never grow hungry. As the disciples sat around on the, that table in, the, in that upper room on that fateful night, uh, they knew not what was coming. But Jesus' words were a reminder to them of the manna in the desert, the life-giving bread that Israel had partaken of. And in verses 53 through 58 in John 6, he amplifies, and Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. We also need to understand the message and the import of what we do today by taking, partaking of the bread. Ellen White amplifies this in her book, The Desire of Ages, where she says, and I quote, to eat the flesh and drink the blood of Christ is to receive him as a personal savior. What food is to the body, Christ must be to the soul. Food cannot benefit us unless we eat it, unless it becomes a part of us, becomes a part of our being. So Christ is of no value to us if we do not know him as a personal savior. A theoretical knowledge will do us no good. We must feed upon him, receive him into the heart so that his life becomes our life, unquote. Let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, holy God, creator, hallowed be thy name. Father, we are gathered here today to partake of the emblems that you have given us, asking to remember by what we do. We emulate you. We bring you into our hearts. We become part of you. You become part of us. Lord, we partake of your body in symbolism, symbolically, your, your body broken for us on the cross. But you become a part of us, sustaining us, and we thank you, Lord. We ask for your blessing and your guidance. In Jesus' name, amen. We have provided uh, cups in the pews for everyone. Uh, there is a cup with grape juice and a cup with um, bread, a bread cracker in there for everyone. Uh, so at this time, I'd like everybody to access a cup of bread where you are. Everyone should have one. We are reminded on the night when Christ was betrayed that he took bread and he broke it and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Does everyone have access to bread where you are? Has anyone been overlooked? Let us now partake of this bread together.
I would like everyone here to recite John 3.16 with me, please. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. What a beautiful, beautiful scripture. It reminds us of his love for each and every one of us. And when I think of, before I pray for the wine that represents the blood of Jesus that was shed for each and every one of us, I would like you guys to, every time you see the color red in your minds to just remember what Jesus did for you, what Jesus did for me. When I look at that color red in our hearts, just to remember that God shed his blood for each and every one of us. It's, it's just so amazing that God would give his son to die for, for you and for me. Let's bar his as I bless the wine at this time. Our dear Heavenly Father, you have died. You have sent your Son to die for each and every one of us and shed his blood, Lord. Lord, I want you to, we're, we're here to ask for a blessing, Lord, upon this wine that represents your blood. And I want, Lord, you said in the word that to examine ourselves Father God, help each one of us to examine ourselves, Lord, and to humble ourselves. Again, we thank you and we praise you for your son, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time, we want to invite you to access the cup of wine where you are. Please handle it carefully to avoid spills. On the night when Christ was baptized, he took and passed the cup and said, this is my blood of the New Testament, of the New Covenant, which is poured out for many for the remission of sins. Scripture teaches us that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Someone had to pay in red ink, and only Jesus qualified. He did that for us. Does everyone have access to the wine where you are? Has anyone been overlooked? Let us partake together. Now at this time, we'll be having a special uh, moment to share God's goodness, uh, his blessings, uh, a testimony. The Bible tells us, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, Amen. that we can share the goodness to our neighbors, to our loved ones. So at this time, um, we have a few minutes. Um, each individual can share uh, the goodness of God. You can just raise your hand wherever you are, and I'll... I'll come to you and, and we can begin. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Good morning. I'm so thankful to, I'm able to share this. Yesterday, I was 
Um, we swim every day, almost every day at Carl Smith. And we park on the side at the, by the highway. And I just sit there and there's times people will come and I meet all kinds of people. I meet people and I pray with them. But yesterday my heart was really heavy for my, one of my sons. We have five sons, one of them lives here in Hilo. For that son, my heart was heavy for. And a family parked on the side of me, and they parked near, and I was like, oh man, they park so near. So the children was started to explore in the water. The husband went and swam. I told him to swim where the stairs were. So the wife um, and I just was talking, and I was trying to feel her out whether she was a Christian, and she was doing the same thing. When she said, oh, the Lord, I said, are you a Christian? She said, yes. So we, we really engaged in our conversation. And so I, my heart was so heavy, I asked her to pray for me. And she prayed for me, and as she was praying for me, and my, she was praying for my son. She was holding my hand, and it was just, the heat from her hand was just starting to get my hands warm. And she just prayed scripture prayer, and she prayed deeply for my son. So after that, her husband came, and as they were leaving, I said, can, we, can you pray for us? So he prayed for us in turn. And she handed me something. She clasped my hand. She handed me something. She goes, this is very small. She goes, it's not much. I do not like to deny blessings because when blessings come, we have to accept it. And if we don't accept blessings, then we're denying them of their blessings of giving. So I said, oh, I, I never say no to blessings. I go, thank you. So when they were leaving, my daughter-in-law comes, and she says, Ma. And I said, oh, I got to let you meet. Um, she prayed for you and Jairus. Now tell me if that is not a miracle. And when I, I opened up my hand, the woman gave me $125. I didn't even know her. When I went in the car, I was just, she goes, the spirit told me to give this to you. I cannot deny the spirit. I was telling, are you sure, God? Are you sure? And he, and he just told me to give it to you. When I went in the car, I was just so weak. My legs were like spaghetti. I've never experienced anything like that. There, are, there is God's people everywhere. If we would just be open to receive blessings and to bless, not just amongst ourselves, but to God is big. This world is big. Let us not contain the love of God receiving and being a blessing just amongst us. Amen. 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 Next. Um, just this morning and over this Christmas season, I was thinking about Jesus and the, and the communion service. And there's a verse in John 13, it says, So he got up from supper, laid aside his outer clothing, took a towel, and tied it around himself. And when I think of Christmas, I think that's what he did. He laid aside everything that couldn't fit into a human infant, which is the most helpless, helpless thing on earth. And Jesus, God, who created by the word of his mouth, he spoke the sky into existence and the, the universe. And yet he laid aside all of that and wrapped himself in a towel, which is something that you use to serve. And he wrapped himself into a human infant. And it's just such an amazing condescension from a creator God to a human infant. And it wasn't like it was just planned that night at Bethlehem. Like you said, it's, it was from the, create, from the foundation of the earth. It was already planned. And I just am in awe of a God who would, who would do that for us. And praise the Lord for his love and his willingness to humble himself to be a helpless infant and grow into a peasant who yet changed the world with his love and his life and his death. Praise the Lord. I'd like to praise God this morning for our schools, both here and on Oahu. 
as I saw Elena and uh, Abby, Kailani, Kalea participating in this service this morning, I was reminded of being in Kona last week. I received a phone call just before my wife and I were about to head over to Kona so that I could preach at the church there, and it was my daughter, and she said, Dad, how do you start a sermon? And I said, well, and I proceeded to give her a couple of tips. I said, why is that? She says, well, I'm preaching in Kapolei today. And I said, well, praise the Lord. I, what are you preaching on? Service. I said, good, me too. So uh, we prayed together, and, and then she proceeded to call us again this week and said, I've been invited to preach at the Spanish church as well. So I praise God that our schools here give the opportunity. They're not perfect. And just because you send your kids to a Christian school doesn't mean they're gonna, it's going to be all roses and, and, and everything else. But that opportunity to serve the Lord is there. And I praise God for Mauna Loa School and for Hawaiian Mission Academy. Amen. Yeah, we're not perfect, but the one we follow is. Amen. I want to share just the love of Jesus that he still gives us the time to have his body and blood. And he promised that when we get to heaven, all of us, he'll have communion and blood with us all together. I praise God for that. Amen. I just want to take this time to um, recognize God's uh, intervention in our lives. It's easy to stay quiet or, or say it was uh, somehow something else other than what it was, which I believe it was God. So a couple weeks ago, we were uh, driving up Saddle Road. It was a full van, minus Josiah, of course, but my two younger boys, Anuhea, my wife, myself, Daniel Havansky, going up for a hike after uh, church. And um, just realized kind of last minute that we were coming up on the, uh, on the uh, you know, on the hike, and it was going to be on the left side, and I was on the right lane. It's a two-lane on, on the direction I'm going towards Kona. And so Nicole, my wife, says, oh, we're coming up on it already. So I look, my focus is on what's behind me, not what's in front of me, especially because I'm on the right lane, yeah? And there's another lane to my left, and then it's oncoming traffic. So I look in the, on the side view mirror to see if I can turn to the left lane, and it was clear. So the impulse in me was to turn, because we were coming up on this place. But for some reason, I paused for just a brief moment, and in that brief moment, zoom, car comes. 80 miles plus, trying to pass all the cars and going from Kona towards Hilo, and he was coming on where I was about to go, on the second inner lane, and it would have been instantaneous death for the whole family. So I was just like, it just dawned on me at that moment, like, wow. It, you can come so close to, to losing life and the tragedy behind, and yet I know that, that God just, just protected us, and so I just want to recognize him for for his protection. Happy Sabbath. Um, I want to thank, thank the Lord for my church family and all the prayers that they've given for our family throughout the year. My mom is 
passed now one year. And, uh, you know, we always think about our family members. But I thank the Lord for them. Not only church family, but my own family. And I, I thank the Lord that my own family is growing. And this is the time we need to spend with either our church family or our regular family members. And it's not the giving, you know, it, it's uh, better to give than to receive. So it's always nice to share. So I just thank the Lord for all that he's done throughout this time for my, myself and my family Amen. and my church family too. Thank you. Amen. Do we have maybe one more? One more maybe? Happy Sabbath, church family. Oh, I just love each and every one of you in here. I love my church family. Like Gary had his birthday last week, and the only card he got was from the church family. Amen. So thank you so very much for that. And I had a blessing. When I first came back to church after the COVID in September, I came to church that Sabbath. I went home. Then a phone rang. I look. I said, oh, it's my cousin. I wonder what she wants. So, Gino, did you check your mailbox? I said, no. So, go check your mail mailbox. I'll send you something. I went, the, I went to the mailbox, cut the letter. She sent me $500, $600 total, five check, $100 class. I said, thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus, for such a beautiful blessing. And I love each and every one of you folks, and I mean it. Amen. Happy Sabbath. Thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is good. All the time. And all the time. And there's more that he has in store for each and every one of you. Yes. Cling to Jesus until the last second of 2021 and start 2022 with Jesus. Cling to Jesus until he comes, and then we'll cling to him forever. Uh, at this time, I want to say a prayer to uh, formally close our communion table. Uh, I want to remind everybody that upon exiting today, it's our custom to collect a love offering. These are funds that go to assist our Hilo Seventh-day Adventist church members in times of financial need, and uh, there'll be deacons at uh, both doors to collect that, uh, that love offering. I want to remind you that uh, as you are receiving from our Mauna Loa School uh, friends boxes of love from Mrs. K, uh, that is one box per family, otherwise we will run out. There's a lot of love, but one box per family as you, as you exit uh, today. I want to invite you to bow your heads with me and pray as we close the table. Father God, thank you so much for this time of remembrance. Lord, we pray that something better than first quarter communion will come. We pray that, that you will come, Lord, and maybe we'll get to sit down at tables on high. But if not, Lord, when we reconvene at the communion table, I just pray that you would put a testimony in our lips and keep us in fellowship with you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. We will have our closing song today, and um, at the conclusion of the closing song today, uh, you are dismissed. Our closing prayer for the communion table will serve as our, our benediction. So after our closing song today, uh, you are dismissed.